So I will start with the moderator, Mr. Michael O'Connor from Cork BIC in Ireland. He's the CEO, and he will serve as our moderator for this session. Thank you. Let's give him a huge round of applause. Okay. Our next uh, panelist is somebody who I know is sitting in this room, but is actually grading the pitch. <laughs> no, Lucy. She is um, the executive director of the Women's Angel Investor Network from the United Arab Emirates, Miss Lucy Cha. Woo! There is 3,000 people in the room. Can we get the voices of... That's more like it. Um, our next speaker panelist is Dr. Nikhil. I will not try the last name. He is the CEO of First um, IT, IIT Kanpur from India. Welcome. Thank you. And our last uh, and very special panelist is Miss Renata Brooke. All right, Renata. Just Renata is fine. She is coming from Phil's Good Social Impact Investment Fund in Croatia. And with that, I have a full panel. Give me a clap. Yay! So, um, I'm Michael O'Connor. We are 50-50. We've just climbed back from uh, the abyss. So, uh, we want to make this lively. <laughs> so, can I, we start. The, the subject is increasing the role of women's a, women angel investors in early stage equity. So, I'll ask each of uh, my panelists to just, in 30, 45 seconds, just introduce themselves. So, starting at Lucy, over to you. Okay, good afternoon, everyone, or good morning. Uh, the relevance, I guess, of myself on this panel is that I am a director of the Women's Angel Investor Network, and that organization was started deliberately for two reasons. One was to have all female angels because we wanted to have more female investors, and then our lens is that we invest in companies that have a diversified uh, founding group, so at least one female uh, founder. Good morning. I'm Renata Berkic. I'm from Croatia. Uh, I just had an accident this morning, so don't be afraid of my fluster. <laughs> uh, I'm a, I've been an entrepreneur for the whole of my life. And then with time, uh, I started with angel investing. And uh, from the entrepreneur, I have uh, gone through, through the angel investor phase. And uh, I have just closed my social impact uh, investment fund recently. Uh, and uh, uh, I've been doing it everything from Croatia and in Croatia, always exposed globally. And um, I really look f I look forward to the panel to see to tell you the interesting things what were happening <laughs> in the process. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Nikhil Agarwal. I am from India. I head the India's largest uh, business incubator. So we manage almost 100 firms as of now. We are uh, adding 25, 30 firms every year. It's a part of the university, which is one of the oldest and the most influential university in the country. And uh, uh, one of the focus that we have is to invite women entrepreneurs and women in technology to come and incubate with us. So to kick it off, um, what are the lessons learned to date and uh, in um, increasing the role? Is it a quota system or how do you energize uh, the supply chain in order to get uh, more women angel investors and their role in um, early stage companies? What's your experience? And maybe one or two, three, one or two points each. Yeah, I, I, so we're quite deliberate because I, I mentioned that we have a gender lens and the way we uh, decide on, on the companies we invest in. But um, yeah, we, it's not necessarily a quota. I guess it's, it's financial sense that we're, we're making. Um, statistically, everyone knows already that diverse teams bring back a stronger ROI on every dollar invested. So at the end of the day, we want to make money and investing in female and diverse teams makes sense. 
So um, uh, we, ha we have a lot of examples from our portfolio, but what we're finding is also no surprise when we invest in female founders, they therefore employ other women. We also then get more women in board roles. Uh, because we also like to take a, an active role. So we'll t ask for either a board seat or an advisory role. Um, and because all our angels are female, that's also helping that, that part of the um, equation. Uh, 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 the, uh, this, this general lens is important, but uh, in investing, I, I really need to stress the profit is first. And then, um, uh, uh, it, and it, it's all about the teams. So uh, when, whenever there are mixed teams, they perform better. And uh, uh, this is what we take care of. When, when we invest from our fund, and we are the social impact uh, investment fund, we really uh, um, are, are approached by more female uh, business founders. And um, they love, uh, uh, when they choose an investor, they would always come to us first. And this is uh, the, rea the reality that we have been facing now. I'd like to draw a parallel to your question. Uh, I'll give an example from India that we have now by law that we have to have one female director in every company. Uh, but unfortunately, out of all the board members, we are not able to find enough female directors who are qualified to serve the board. Same way, uh, and what happens practically that one's wife is the board member in another company and another wife is board member in another company for the namesake. So participation is extremely low. And if we look at the parallel, and that was a by law, so it's a compulsory subject. But at the same time, if you look at the investor, uh, the challenge is even higher. Uh, many investors are there and they have formed the company. In fact, one of the largest stock, stock brokers in uh, India, uh, one of the richest person in India is, uh, uh, is a lady, but her husband has set up a company on her behalf so that he can trade and probably he, 30 years back he was uh, blacklisted. So that's another thing that we see, okay, she's, her name always figures the top list but it's actually the husband who's managing it. So uh, finding the pipeline and finding the uh, 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 female uh, directors or educated female uh, investors to come forward is, is certainly a challenge in, in developing world. Yes, yeah, so the, the effectiveness of boards and the effectiveness of an investment comes a little bit, I think you're harking on the diversity. And uh, women tend to look at different things in a business. It's not always the cash. It can actually be the human resource and make it effective. It can be actually generating energy. It can be generating the new, um, the new, the new uh, team down, downstream. Um, any experience about the effectiveness of women within, within companies and um, examples maybe that, uh, that could be very short that would explain the impact Maybe, Lucy, if that's not too difficult a question. I guess I can talk about um, one of our, our investee companies, uh, Needs List. So first of all, I want to clarify that we are not an impact fund. I, I am very excited to see that in the UAE there are more social impact funds being established. But because our group is full of female investors, I think naturally we gravitate towards, yes, one, companies that will make us a return, but two, by default, there is an impact um, in the world. So one of the companies is called Needs List, and essentially they're almost like a marketplace where online, if there's a, a major catastrophe, they will put out online, okay, we need 10,000 beds, or in the coronavirus case, we need masks, and then uh, maybe a provider like Johnson & Johnson will come on and say, okay, yes, we'll give you those 10,000 masks. Um, they're a very well-known company. They've done exceptionally well, um, but that's an example of where they're bringing a lot of value back to society, but we can also see that there is an increase in our, in our funding, uh, in the money that we've put in already. Well, I will tell you the example from Croatia. There is a movement that is called, uh, now I call it a movement already, that is called the Business Cafe, and it's a real business. It is, was founded by a, an especially enter, 
entrepreneurial woman who uh, actually opened the platform for people to come and uh, for entrepreneurs to exchange the ideas, tell their experiences. It started uh, maybe already seven years ago, but it was then growing all the time. And um, it, it is the top-notch event and the thing in Croatia also now spread regionally. It has become a real business and um, it's like a, a, a peer group. But what is special about it that 80% of the participants and of the group are women. Women were uh, felt the need to come, to talk, to open and they cooperate among each other. Uh, of course, there are also these special men among uh, the, the, the women in the group. But uh, 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 this movement really helped growing many, many small, from small businesses to big businesses in Croatia, in the region. It was a great networking. And uh, this is um, uh, one of the, of, the, of the deals we uh, are going and we are considering now to invest in for the, for the, for the global scaling. It's, it's just something that is a nice example. Uh, in India, we have a similar movement called Shiro's. Mm -hmm. Like from heroes, they have taken up the Shiro's and it's uh, uh, now there are thousands of women which are part of the Shiro's and uh, the women have been groomed for leadership position for investors, even for the political leadership. And uh, uh, since Madam President is here, I would like to make a comment which is quite important that the developing world has given more women leaders than a developed world. Uh, in fact, we have more women president and prime ministers in India, in Bangladesh, in Mauritius, and you name it. And in uh, the developed world, the UK, uh, maybe not UK, but US and other places still finding it difficult to find a suitable female candidate to, uh, for the top job. So certainly, uh, uh, there is, uh, and, and I would say that also goes culturally. If you look at the history of uh, uh, the con uh, southern continent, there were examples where the women uh, 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 queens and they have ruled the country and they have provided the leadership. So there exists a, a mechanism, there exists a culture, there exists a, uh, you know, a need for all doing all this. It's just a matter of like how do we channelize it and how do we take it forward? Yeah, interesting, in uh, Ireland, which is uh, no longer linked to the UK, uh, it's part of Europe, uh, now Ireland is, but uh, we have uh, two ladies who left college and uh, one went to work in investment banking and then came back and started a business, which is not monetized um, and is about recycling food from supermarkets and food companies, food manufacturers, into the homeless and into charities and setting up major distribution, IT distribution network with that, with vans, uh, coal storage and, then, and distributing it now in Ireland and the UK and they're getting major contracts from the, um, the supermarkets like Tesco and people like that. So this is now a business even though it's technically uh, not for profit without shareholders etc. And it shows how two people with no experience in that sector, they're women but they have the conviction and the charm and they could do it and they're young, they're kind of under 30 years old and they're doing this, whereas everybody else is trying to earn a, a salary, but they're paying themselves and having a, a great lifestyle doing this. So the uh, opportunities in this space, if you are um, a female entrepreneur or a market maker, what are the opportunities in actually giving something back and also bringing on the next um, the next tier of female entrepreneurs to actually uh, set the standards. The new investors of the future are always uh, usually in women angel networks, entrepreneurial people. They could be from the public sector as well as from the private sector. Um, and uh, so how do you, uh, what are the opportunities there and how should one go about it in a quick few words? Lucy. And so you mean in terms of business opportunities? So for instance, um, the rise of femtech, um, is, is huge there because we're, we're women we can see a lot of different business opportunities um, that maybe our male counterparts will not see and in the case of femtech now there's um, a, a lot of males and VCs 
investing in that space. So as a female, there's a lot of um, pain points that we have and that we understand. And there's many, many companies that have built um, fabulous companies based on, on pain points that they've experienced themselves. Well, um, the opportunities in Croatia uh, are huge because uh, Croatia is lucky to be a member of the EU, the last one. Uh, but uh, uh, Croatia had become the EU member four years ago. And now after this first uh, cycle, um, uh, uh, it, the results are visible. And they are um, all of the opportunities that come from the, from the EU, even for angel investors, for women entrepreneurs. And uh, um, really uh, one can now uh, use the funds and uh, there is a lot of know-how and lots of knowledge. So um, we, and it was not like that. That's why um, I'm, I'm stressing it. Uh, it's a big uh, difference uh, now that uh, we have become a, a member of the EU and uh, we are um, actually uh, helping our neighbors now, the Bosnia and Serbia and Macedonia. And we can see, we can see uh, how different it is and how um, a lucky actually we were. So um, uh, uh, the the heritage in Croatia is a country of former Yugoslavia. So this there is that heritage that was called like socialism, where we really had women equality. We never had a g gender problem in that sense, as Zaki you were mentioning. So um, uh, we feel on in the region, even not only in Croatia. Um, we have the women uh, as a board members uh, and we have uh, women scientists. For example, if we refer to the speech of the princess yesterday, uh, the ratio of the registered scientists in Croatia is 65 in favor of women. So, uh, and, and it has to do with, with that political heritage and, and uh, so, um, so then they interfere uh, with business and um, uh, I, I think we are doing well and I think uh, Croatia is a nice environment uh, now for women to start businesses if you forget this classical women men who takes care of children and all of that but if they want and if they just go uh, there are opportunities. Though this question was more meant to the woman but I'll try to answer. I'll just pick up what the Renata... Yes, I'll... <laughs> Uh, I tried to pick up what the Renata has said. So she has raised a very important issue. If you look at the 5,000 years of history of humankind, the gender inequality is a quite a new phenomena. Uh, it was gender equality, if you look at the old books, it, it was always gender equal. Uh, but I think the last thousand year or so, we have forgotten that uh, what we have learned or what we have gained in the last 4,000 years. Uh, so certainly, uh, in now is the turn of century, so certainly it's a time for uh, reset the clock and uh, bring back, uh, so there is a talk about 33% of uh, uh, equality. I don't think that's a, a, a discussion point, that there should not be a reservation or something, but there should be a mechanism where the women and men should come forward and work together. And that's like what we have seen in the families or uh, even in the past. So, uh, certainly, uh, I would like to support what the Renata has said. <laughs> yeah, so increasingly in businesses now, the uh, IP or the resource is the, um, is the employees, high tech, high quality employees, and keeping those and getting them effective is really, really important. And women tend to be, have more radars working in that space and tend to be more effective. But um, taking the advice of, uh, say, female entrepreneurs or leaders, there's cash, which is investment, there's advice, and then there's this uh, magic quality of mindfulness about A, the deal, and B, the outcome. Um, funds that have been set up to do that. Uh, anybody experience rising tide? Um, start, Lucy. Oh, Yummy's not here. Yummy's Rising Tide Africa, but Rising Tide, um, Next Wave, there's a lot of um, organizations out there that have been set up to pool funds to invest in female startups, and, and Wayne is one of them. But Rising Tide, and I wanted to mention, because this 
panel is also about how to get more women investing in companies. They do training. Um, they also not only pool their money, but they make sure that the, the investors feel comfortable and they're investor ready. And so I think I'll be remiss if I didn't mention that the WBAF itself is doing a great job in this area because Baybars' whole vision is to have more investors. So we have the QBAC training um, to get more angels qualified. And also we've started up um, a fund our, ourselves, um, the WBAF Startup Fund. And I would encourage anyone in this room of 3,000 people that are not current angels to please think about in investing. Um, you know, you can just dip your toe in initially at a, at a low amount. You find a pool fund, tap other <laughs> angels that you know and ask them um, anything you want about that, that area. Um, because I think what we're finding is that women aren't getting on the first rung. They're not being asked and they aren't putting up their hands to be investors. Sorry, I kind of segue. Uh, we have a Women Angels Network in Croatia. So the only uh, Angels Network, apart from uh, the WBNF office in Croatia, is a Women Angels Network headed by, by, by a woman. And uh, they, uh, as we have opened the office last year and we have started with the programs, they immediately joined. They were founded by a lady from Latin America who came to live in Croatia. And um, uh, she is uh, actually, uh, she's, she gathers uh, the women who uh, would like to invest. And uh, she already started with the trainings. Now we are partnering and we, we do the trainings for the. And I would never imagine how many women exist and how many women are, uh, are happy to get the chance to invest, but they were just uh, hidden somewhere. There was no pl platform. And uh, because angel investing is new in Croatia, uh, to be honest. And uh, uh, this is another good example. And uh, it was like provoked by our opening of a WBNF office. Once you open and you, and you come there, then people uh, go after you and then you discover uh, the ecosystem, which uh, didn't have a platform to, to, uh, to show themselves. So this is what we have. Okay. We do have the small groups which are investors, uh, but we don't have a specific women angel network. That is not in my knowledge. So we do have uh, within the large investor groups that there is there exist certain groups which are focusing on uh, sustainable startups or women led startups or women in technology, women in science. Those things are happening, and there is a specific programs which is run uh, by incubators uh, and inviting women entrepreneurs to get incubated. And there is a schemes which is going by the government in providing additional funds uh, to women-led startups. Uh, and I recall that there is like uh, in the certain scheme, there need to be a one woman co-founder. Uh, if there is yes, then, then of course you can apply for a quite a generous funding from the government. So there, so there is uh, uh, things going on. Yeah. Um, any questions from the audience or uh, comments? Um, it could be a, um, like uh, how many um, women startups get first round funding. First round funding is a few hundred thousand seed round. Renata, this question is for you. Uh, so wonderful to hear the stats, you know, uh, refreshing really today that there is abundance of women led businesses or for women to get access to opportunities. What is a success rate? It's one thing to have opportunities. It's, it's one thing to have an opportunity to show up at the table, but you know, like Lucy, you said, it's not about just getting the opportunity, it's about being capable, really producing the results, having a positive ROI on investment. So um, you are indeed a good investment for, an, for a firm there. So what in your opinion is the success rate on that and are there any opportunities? Well, uh, the success rate uh, depends on the, on the size you want to, to, to achieve. So um, 
uh, uh, these opportunities for women, fem female founders of the of the companies, they exist, and these girls are using them, and they run successful businesses. Uh, not all of, I mean, 98 percent of these businesses they keep small, and they are small, but they are profitable, and they employ uh, uh, one to ten people, so they, they are really. SMEs, they are not unicorns, but this is a big thing because um, uh, this, this, the, the women then do what they want. They are in their, in their profession, whether they are software designers or fashion designers or, or whatever, and uh, uh, these opportunities are available uh, for them. Uh, the other side of the coin are the like like ventures that uh, are supposed to grow and to scale and uh, um, uh, 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 talking about the success rate there uh, i know one venture i know two, two special ladies who are the founders and the owners and they've got the venture investment and they're growing like crazy they're doing impact they are, they, are, they have a business in croatia america bosnia and whatever from the fashion brand, uh, they started as a fashion brand, and they are now the the platform for tourism and in the digital. They've been, they've been evolving their business model, um, and and they are the two girls, no men involved. But um, other ventures are of course all mixed teams, and um, and uh, uh, in, in this entrepreneurial world, I, I really see more and more women and. Uh, these are the two areas. Okay, so if there's a takeaway here for uh, the audience, if you woke up tomorrow morning and you had to jump out of bed and say, what is the one thing, the big idea, that um, each of us could do to increase the role of women angel investors uh, into early stage, early stage companies, and what would you do? Lucy? And this will wrap up after this. I have a particular passion in uh, focusing on the next generation. And so, as you know, the funding world is pretty opaque down to all the, the terminology. So I think it's fairly important to start young and to start um, putting in entrepreneurial skills into schools. Um, so that's a particular focus of mine because in any entrepreneurial ecosystem, what do you need? You need perhaps government support, depending on the country. You need mentors and you need funding, but we, we lack uh, role models. Uh, I would agree with Lucy. Role models are important and uh, 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 we, we really need uh, uh, to, to find and to point out the special women who are not afraid to come out with the ideas and who can uh, uh, then uh, th then the, the, the other women will follow them. This is what we, we see. So if I wake up tomorrow morning, I'll do much radical work. I will speak to all the, the husbands and the fathers and the brothers of the world and they say that, hey, that you have to trust the women in the house. You have to provide them opportunity. You have to uh, uh, put them into the education system. Still, uh, whether it's developed word or developing word, the women in the house are not coming forward just because the men in the house does not provide them opportunity to come forward. I think that's the most important thing. And once you provide them a path, uh, they will come forward and they will beat you, that's for sure. So don't get beaten, collaborate. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. And it's often the schooling systems, the teachers, because this has to be done before the... Um, the kids leave school, so try off and fail early, start early. Uh, we don't do enough of that. We wait, 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 and try to over-educate ourselves in entrepreneurship. So thank you to our panel. Indeed, it was very good. I hope we did okay as a 50-50 um, mix. Uh, we are uh, male at this end and female at that end. We should have been mixed, truly. But thank you for your time and patience. <laughs>